Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. We are at the Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo, and we have an opportunity to talk to a guy that knows all about fishing in this area, Bill Hiltz, Jr. Bill, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. We're going to talk about fishing uh, the western side of Lake Ontario today, and can you tell us a little bit about some of the ports in this area on the New York side that, that you know of that are uh, good fishing on the western side of Lake Ontario? They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my full-time job, I am the Outdoor Promotions Director for Destination Agri USA, and I'm the Niagara County Fish Program Coordinator. So our focus is on the Niagara River, Niagara Bar, uh, Wilson, and Alcott as the primary ports. But I also serve as president of the Lake Ontario Sport Fishing Promotion Council, which encompasses all of the counties along the Lake Ontario shoreline here in New York. And I work a lot with Orleans County, so mm -hmm. Point Breeze, York Orchard River. And you can go on down the lake as far as good fishing sure. opportunities depending on the time of year and what the species is that's one of the best things about lake ontario is the diversity you know you can go out there and target brown trout you can target steelhead you can target salmon and still be able to you know pick and choose what you want to go for on any given day in fact the same day mm -hmm. if you want to and we have some rather unique aspects because of the Niagara River. Niagara River is the biggest single flow of water coming into Lake Ontario, providing about 80% of all the water in that lake. That's the water coming down from the upper four Great Lakes. And the Niagara Bar is second to none as far as spring salmon fishing. Uh, it's one of the locations that derby fishermen and tournament fishermen will target early in the year. And you know we're blessed to have that here in the spring it attracts a lot of the forage base and as a result those predator fish will show up uh, i think because of uh, all the different pen rearing projects that we're seeing and also natural reproduction of salmon in the lake uh, coming out of the salmon river fish hatchery and salmon river itself we're we're seeing uh, better spreading out of a lot of those salmon. Uh, a good indication was last year for the Spring Derby, which is usually won by somebody in Niagara County year after year after year. Last year it was Oswego County that actually won it, although quite a few of the fish came out of Niagara and Orleans counties. So, you know, the, the, the fishery is constantly evolving out there, and we're adapting accordingly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think there's a, a tremendous communication network out there between the charter captains and with the increase of social media and the, the fish can't hide anymore. Right. You know, that's one of the reasons I think why we're seeing uh, uh, an increase catch rate, you know, documented by the, the Lake Ontario Open Lake Creel Census put on by our conservation department, the Department of Environmental Conservation. And they, they, they do a good job as far as uh, surveying the people and, and maintaining a, a, a database that they can look after year after year. And two years ago, so this would be 2018, it was the highest catch rate of salmon that they've ever seen in the lake. And not just salmon, but also the, the top three fish species in the lake, it was also the highest catch rate. So, you know, when you'd start lumping in the, the brown trout and steelhead and, and even coho salmon, the, uh, the, the fishery really has been very good. And, and 2019, we haven't seen all the numbers yet, but it looks like it was better than 2017. And 2017 was another record year as far as catch rate for salmon. So when, when you look at what's happening, in addition to some of the issues we've had to deal with as far as the high water levels, you know, fishing's never been better out in Lake Ontario, but you can't always look at the, the local news sensationalism because they're telling people to, you know, stay off Lake Ontario because of the, the high water and the, the emergency situation for, for boating and, and there were some access issues, but 
you know, if you're a hardy fisherman and you want to get out there on the lake, you're going to find a way to get out there. And every single launch ramp in Niagara County was open. But sometimes you had to adapt. You had to wear boots to be able to get your boat into the water. Uh, Town of Newfane, they did an excellent job by, by actually rigging uh, pallets on some of the docks so nobody got their feet wet. Mm -hmm. But once you got out on the water, it was a, a heyday out there. Sure. And the last three years on Lake Ontario has been really the best three years documented. Can you tell me a little bit about the evolution? How has that gone over the last 10, 15 years to where we are now? Well, I, you know, I, I would say ever since we hit 2003, 2004, the salmon fishing has been pretty good. You know, we've had a couple off years, but it's probably the best consistent salmon fishing that we've seen in a long time. And and you don't know really what the the, the true reason is. Uh, you know, the pen rearing projects. That's right around the time that, that we got hot and heavy into those pen rearing projects. And all the way from the Niagara River, all the way up to Henderson Harbor, they had pen rearing projects for salmon and steelhead. And, and as a result of that, they've done some studies. Our, our biologists with the Lake Ontario unit, they, they found that rearing fish in these pens, they'll survive better than two to one. And, and some of them, I think, have been as high as three or four to one. And, and Compared to stockfish. Compared to stockfish, yes, exactly. In fact, last year, every single fish that was stocked in Niagara County were reared in pens. And that's a benefit, you know, long, long term that we, we want to see. But, you know, there's things that we still have to tweak. Uh, one example of uh, trying different things is last year for the first time there was a tank project instead of pen rearing project it was a tank that was on shore mm -hmm. down in Youngstown off the lower Niagara River and we had three key members of the Niagara County Fisheries Development Board that worked together to make that happen it was a a smaller lot it was 5,000 salmon but it was an experiment a pilot pro program and we thought that if we could get uh, a tank working to our benefit by maybe warming that water up a little bit allowing those fish to get to be a little bit bigger size so that they survive better it would be more beneficial and the Niagara River is a completely different animal if you know anything about what happens in the springtime there's a huge ice boom that sits up at the head of the river up where Buffalo and Fort Erie Ontario is and that ice boom kind of blocks the 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 ice from moving into the river and as a result it's it's kept colder longer mm -hmm. so that that river water will maintain a 32 33 34 degree temperature until the ice boom is pulled and and the remainder of that ice is allowed to flow down through the the river system so they won't release the ice boom until there's 160 square miles of ice left and last year we were complicated by the fact that right around when we were getting near we we're ready to release the ice boom we had 70 mile an hour winds from the southwest that blew right up Lake Erie and pushed all that ice right into Buffalo and on top of the ice boom and they couldn't get the ice boom out so it was colder, longer, and it just messes up things like pen rearing projects or, or tank projects. But pretty much that, that tank project was a success. Uh, DEC is excited by it. They, they want to help support that. If, if that's something that we can move to other ports like Wilson or Alcott, we're already talking about that on our local fisheries development board. And, and if that were to happen, you know, we might be able to get some cohos in in the fall and hold them over for the winter. Uh, we might be able to hold salmon a little bit longer just to get them a little bit bigger and, and increasing the survival rate for those fish and hopefully imprint those fish a little bit better. That's, that's one thing that's been brought up by, by uh, local stakeholders of the sport fishing community. We want to see better staging fish, fish that are, are going to be returning to those ports, the ports that... 
that they think that's their natal stream mm -hmm. and and we haven't seen as as good of a staging fishery as we would have liked um, you know last year it was great out in the lake fishing but places like the Niagara River it struggled with their run this year for whatever reason and there's really never been any uh, studies that determine what's wrong you know are, are are we getting the fish so late from the salmon river that that they're they're really imprinting to the salmon river uh, is it because there are other ports f further to the west like uh, Port Dalhousie that th that's essentially the same water as what comes out of the Niagara River because that's that's water coming in from Lake Erie so so are we losing some fish to that are, are we are we catching too many fish in the spring and summer and early fall before they ever make it into those streams you know maybe we need to target more more fish there try to get better survival with with new programs like the tank project that was talking about so you know a lot of different things to consider and and we don't have all the answers for sure but bottom line spring and summer you won't find a better fishery sure we talked about the evolution where it's come where do you think it's going well you know that it's difficult to say from the standpoint of you know what's what's happening with the forage base out there you know uh, DEC has done a tremendous amount of work working with USGS uh, geological survey and and also Canada which is also a partner you know province of Ontario they manage Lake Ontario as a resource for for both sides so they have to come to consensus whenever they make any changes or do anything different and in last year 2019 it was the most intensive trawl study for the forge base that they've ever done and they're going to need to continue that to maintain a, a better handle on, on what's happening out there bottom line though is they still do not know how many predators are out there so uh, you know are they able to manage the the resource for trophy fish are they able to manage the resource for numbers of fish you know that's it's still subjective as far as which way the the stakeholders want to go with it you know some stakeholders believe that that uh, they could stock a few more fish in the lake and others think that you know they don't want to tip the cart they don't want to see any reduction in in what we're seeing out there as far as catch rates for for salmon and trout so um, I think DEC is going to continue to tr try to stay on top of this as far as managing the fishery you know if we can continue to maintain quality catch rates and and keep everybody happy you know that's hopefully the way it's going to go um, Alewife is still number one as far as the forage base is concerned and you know we, we don't know whether or not uh, salmon will adapt to other forage fish in this lake. Uh, I, I was just talking to somebody 15 minutes ago that was telling me about they were fishing in 12 feet of water or less last spring and targeting kings that were eating gobies and that's unusual mm -hmm. you know and and I know there's plenty of alewives out there as far as the Western Basin is concerned that's my experience I talk to the charter captains almost every single day and and they see a tremendous forage base out there for for our end of the lake and you know hopefully things will continue going the way they're going I, I, I'm not sure long term what's going to happen the other factor is that high water i was talking about we had something that was passed in lake ontario it was back uh, one of the final things that obama did when he was president he, he signed off on something called plan 2014 and plan 2014 allowed for higher water levels and lower water levels and we still don't know the full effects and what's that what what's going to happen in the future as far as where it's all going to go we, we've seen the higher water levels uh, we're already forecasting a foot and a half above this past year which was a record and 
you know, it's it's something that we've had to learn to adapt to. Our, our state governor has said this is the new normal, and he came up with a plan this past year called the Resiliency and Economic Development Initiative. He came up with $330 million to help create a better infrastructure based on this higher water. It's still only uh, a small portion of what we need to, to get done, but, you know, when you look at some of the upper Great Lakes that are also experiencing record water levels, you know, this is water that's going to have to come down through Ontario sometime, and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to be able to balance the shipping industry, uh, places like Montreal that's downriver, and what we have here as far as the the access and the ports, the, the, the landowners, and, and having to deal with all this. You know, it's, it's just a, a snowball effect, and we don't know where it's going to stop. By the same token, ever since we've had high water, we've also had good salmon fishing. So is that doing something different to the ecosystem that's, that's uh, allowing for better fishing? You know, it's still early in the process and, and we're gonna have to look at the long-term effects, what's gonna happen. And then I had mentioned about lower lows. We still haven't seen those. And if in fact they, they incorporate lower lows into the system after we've built everything up to higher water levels or the new norms, what's going to happen okay. you know are, are you really going to be able to carry around ladders in your boat to be able to get up to your docks which i saw just a few years ago mm -hmm. and it's just um you know work in progress i guess yeah and that's I mean, we talk about how it does how it affects <laughs> our infrastructure as humans but i mean that really affects the infrastructure of the water for for the fish that we're seeking too and how does that progress as things go on? And, and that's, again, like you said, something that we're going to have to figure out. Are, are there other things that are going on as far as water quality that are looked at as an issue right now with you guys? Well, as far as water quality, we don't see it as much in, in Lake Ontario as far as things like the harmful algal blooms. But... Uh, you know, that's always a concern to see if we're going to see something like that with uh, the warmer waters. Uh, lake Erie, they definitely had some problems with that. It's a shallower Great Lake. You know, that could, could be part of the issue. But, um, you know, as far as actual water quality, I think things have been pretty good as far as Lake Ontario is concerned. I, I think uh, things like the, the phosphates that, you know, when there was a phosphate ban that was put into place, uh, Lake Ontario had a, a certain level that they wanted to be at. And they're well below that level right now. And now the concern would be, you know, are you going to be having problems with the bottom end of the forage base now? So just have to play that by ear as well. You have to analyze everything and see how things are changing. You know, invasive species are, are always a concern, especially in the Great Lakes because of the, the shipping industry. And I think there still is some type of ballast exchange happening out there that, that potentially could create problems. I know it's uh, the last that I heard, um, I think it was mandatory in Canada when you came through that you had to make sure you had a clean ballast or, or check for that. But I think it was just encouraged in New York. I don't think it was mandatory. So, you know, even though 99% of the boats coming through are good, mm -hmm. you know, it only takes 1% Sure. to create that problem. That's how we ended up with round nose gobies and zebra mussels and quagga mussels and you know we don't need any more and at last count it was something like 190 different invasive species in the Great Lakes. So we got to stay on top of that as well. Bill it's been good talking to you. I know you've got a busy schedule out there and a lot going on. Is there something else you want to touch on before I let you go? Well from the standpoint of wearing my my tourism hat, you know, make, make sure you look at Niagara Falls, USA as a possible destination in the future. We encourage people to come here fishing. We try to do our best to make sure you catch fish and have a good time. That's one of the reasons why we're involved with the Greater Niagara Fishing and Outdoor Expo with uh, over 200 seminars given by over 100 different speakers. We're trying to educate the general public to be able to go fishing. We want people to enjoy the resource and we're 
we're focusing on Lake Ontario, the Niagara River, Lake Erie, and other water bodies because we want somebody to go out there, catch a fish, have a good time, and then pay it forward. We want people to go out there and share it with friends and family. And the more people we get out there fishing, the better it will be for our future. We need to encourage people to be the future stewards of these resources. And we're all getting older. Yeah, that's what's really incredible. This is my first time attending this show, and I'm really blown away by the amount of seminars that you have. And I mean, this this really is, I mean, there's a show floor out there, and there's a place for people to go out and look at the products and learn about the products, but this is really a learning show. You guys really uh, have put together something pretty amazing here. Yeah, and you know, I'm just one small piece of the puzzle. Uh, Joe Yeager, who's the president of the Lake Ontario Trout and Salmon Association, he puts most of that education together, and then coupled with the quality of the vendors that we have in the main exhibit hall, you know, that's all education too. You know, guys like Lance Valentine, who Mr. Electronics, uh, everything you need to know about how to work your electronics on your boat and make you a better fisherman. You know, I, <laughs> I, I remember. He was on a television show that I have, The Outdoor Beat, and, and he says, if you're not using your electronics and and you don't know how it's working, you're not going to catch fish. And if you're in a spot and you're not marking fish, why are you fishing there? Go, go to the spot where, where your electronics are telling you, hey, there's perch here. Mm -hmm. Go after them. So, you know, just, just little things like that, everyone you know whether you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran you can pull away with some tidbits of information to make you a better fisherman by attending the show awesome bill thanks so much for coming on the show we really appreciate it thanks for listening thanks for watching we'll talk to you next time